Well, hey guys, welcome back. You don't see much of my face anymore, and that was kind of strategic for a while for several reasons that we'll go over in just a chit-chat video at some point. But today, we're talking about inflation. Yeah, you see it all over the news and everything, but how does it affect the model train hobby? Well, we've got a couple Walther's catalogs to look at, and what we're going to do is compare the price difference between now and 2007. Now I know for a lot of you model railroaders, 2007 is a joke. That's not even long ago. But when you do the math, it's starting to really add up. It was 16 years ago. Now I wasn't even in the hobby in 2007, but my cousin got me all these Walther's catalogs from 2007 up to 2014. He had double copies, so he sent me those. So now I can use these to give you an idea are you paying more for your trains now than you were then? We'll take a deep dive into inflation, how it affects trains, starting now. So some ground rules first. Each month, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics comes out with inflation data. Matter of fact, as of the date of this recording, October 8th, it's due out in a few days for the month of September, the previous month. So all we can do is go to August, but we're going to also try to do apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So I'm trying to find things in this catalog that's both recently released and was released back then. And the first thing I came up with is the Walther's GP7. Now, the Walther's GP7 in 2007 for standard DC, which is all I can find for comparison to today, was an MSRP of $125. Today's price is exactly $100 more than that at $225. Now, if I put this in the data for the Bureau of Labor and Statistics on an app, I come up with $125 in 2009, and I chose July, is worth $178 today. So there's a slight bump. But one thing we don't account for always is detail, electronics and such, so it's just a slight bump on this diesel. This is going to be example for the diesel locomotive. I'm going to find a steam example, and we'll try to find a sound example, but going back this far, there wasn't a whole lot of sound items. Next, we're going to look at a Bachman Spectrum electric locomotive and one that's been out for a while. This in 2009, because we've had to change catalogs a bit to find some stuff that matches, is the Amtrak Acela set with an MSRP of $180, as you can see there. We're on the page for the Bachman Acela set. And now the MSRP is $675, but it is already equipped with DCC. But looking back, the previous one was DCC ready, so it's hard to call this exact apples and apples. But let's go ahead and plug that in to the inflation calculator here. And I think we're going to have quite the difference on that. Yeah, that inflated to $256 from $180, and MSRP is now $650. So, unfortunately, uh, that has definitely seen an increase in cost, even if you consider the difference between the DCC equipped and the DCC ready. Okay, guys, I'm going to be honest here. I'm having a hard problem trying to find something that matches completely with apples to apples for steam locomotives because I've got DCC equipped in 2009 and then I've got DCC and sound in today's era. But I'll tell you overall, across all the manufacturers I can find, you're looking at about a 20% increase of what you're paying now versus what you'd be paying then. But probably you could easily account 10% of that or more for just the amount of uh, electronics differences and such. But it's not crazy it's just a little bit more and then there's so many factors in this video that I can't cover that I really should mention the cost of labor overseas to produce this has gone up so much so my goal is to try to look at all the different categories diesel steam 
Uh, electric we looked at, we're going to look at freight cars next, and passenger cars and see if I can find something to compare directly to. Because what I found overall in my study is it's not we're not paying hardly anything more than we were then. Um, it averages 10 to 20 percent, but again a lot of those averages are based off of the difference between DCC and DCC and sound equipped steam locomotives. So let me dig in a little more and we'll go to the next item which is freight cars. So Atlas has no shame in their game at all. I don't even have to go to the Walders catalog to figure this out. Right on their site here is their Atlas HO scale articulated auto carrier. They've got prices all the way back to March of 2006. So since we're looking at 2007 to 2009, I'm gonna look at March of 2008 where the MSRP on this was 64.95 compared to June of 2019 where the MSRP was 99.95. So how does that add up in the calculator? Okay, so 64.95 in 2008 and 99.95 for the MSRP in 2019. According to the infl inflation calculator, 77.91 would be just the inflation cost. Okay, here's a really interesting one. We can look at KD, which does not have as much overseas factors, if any. So, KD's PS1 HO scale boxcar, exact same that's in this uh, manual here, this catalog for Walders, is $39.95 today. I can buy that right off their website for $39.95. That's completely color, dec decorated, painted, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but in the Walders catalog, $31.95. So 2008 was $31.95. Today is $39.95. So let's see what the inf inflation catalog says about that. We're going to go all the way to 2023. And it should be 45.65. So KD is one example of where you're still getting a really good deal, and it's actually beat inflation. And you see that in lots of things, even in our hobby. You see it in electronics. TVs used to be insane. Now you can pick up a TV for so cheap you can line your house with them. So KD uh, freight cars such as this PS1 box car actually beating inflation. All right, now let's, let's look at track real quick. We've got Pico Flex Track in here in the catalog, $7.60 for a 36 inch piece, as you can see right there. And when I look at Walders today, I can tell you uh, it's on sale for $7.64, which is almost exactly the same price, but it's actually marked out 960, so we'll go with the 960 just to be safe because Walders has sales pretty frequently, and those items are going to be on, you know, going to be off of sale at any time. So 760, and today is 1086. So Pico Flex Track is another example of beating in the inflation. Curve. Okay, last but not least, we're looking at structures. I know. This isn't the best put together video, but American Hardware Supply, a Walders Cornerstone Kit, $49.98 in 2008. Today is on sale for $55.98 on walders.com, but it's $64.98 marked out, so that's what we're going to go with for the price difference. So let's see what that does price-wise on the inflation calculator. It should be up to $71. 42 based on just inflation. So structures, in this case at least, are also beating inflation. So we've looked at quite a bit of stuff and there's just so many X factors, I can't stress enough that this is not a really accurate picture in some cases, especially with the DCC and sound equipped locomotives. But what we looked at in recap was the DC locomotives were just slightly beating inflation, and that could easily be accounted for with labor costs, increased labor costs, costs overseas, or even here in the US. As you have noticed, nobody wants to pay, get paid $7.50 to work at a fast food restaurant anymore. You see signs all the time, $14, $15. 
starting out at a fast food restaurant on those billboards, at least where I live, and I'm not even in a big city. So there's going to be increased labor costs that are factored in, the electronics differences, especially when I tried to compare some of the electronics with DCC equipped versus DCC ready, there's going to be a cost increase there. Overall, what I found in my study is we are not paying more, in many cases, not at all, in rolling stock, in track, except for some brands of track, uh, and in DC locomotives than we were back in 2007 through 9. We are paying a little bit more for sound equipped locomotives and we're paying up to 20% more for maybe even 25% uh, more for sound equipped highly detailed steam locomotives. So it was really hard to find exact comparisons but looking at this overall is the hobby expensive? Yes, it gets very expensive. Is it more expensive than it was then? Not necessarily, especially based off of inflation. Now, many people can argue that you could buy a house for a lot cheaper, you could buy a car for a lot cheaper, interest rates for cheaper. All of that is true, and that's going to pinch you more on the front end to not be able to spend money on the train end of things. But overall, just in our little world of model trains, not much of a price increase at all for what we're getting a lot more highly detailed items, a lot more reliable items, uh, a lot more um, electronically sophisticated items in our hobby today. So I hope this gives you a good idea of whether the hobby is keeping up with inflation, beating inflation, how much it's costing. I haven't figured out what I'm going to label this video yet, but it was just a neat idea that I thought maybe we'll look into this and see what we get. So with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.